ICOM ethics violations by Blackhaven Hall. Second thing is successes and limitations of scholarly game. Absolutely, Ch can we do a poll or prediction? Let's start a prediction. Uh, stop it. There we go. Uh, the other thing I need to do here is uh, add a second window capture for PDFs. It's not going to be Streamlabs. Apologies for the Bizarre duplications. Grab ourselves that ICOM code of ethics. Boom. Uh, the open questions. The uncomfortable of the museum's tone. Contrast to what probably happened now is presented. Amazing. Don't regret staying up way too late. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed, Kyra. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Also, yeah, uh, I'm glad everyone's voting for the more than 10 violations, because, yeah. By the way, the Icon Code of Professional Ethics was adopted unanimously by the 15th General Assembly of the International Council of Museums in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Buenos Aires, sorry, Argentina on 4th November 1986. It was amended by the 20th General Assembly in Barcelona, Spain on 6th of July 2021, retitled the ICOM Code of Ethics for Museums, and revised again by the 21st General Assembly in Seoul, Republic of Korea on the 8th of October 2004. Praise be to the Ethics Code. Ethics Part 1, Museums preserve, interpret, and promote the natural and cultural inheritance of humanity. Principle, museums are responsible for the tangible and intangible natural and cultural heritage. Uh, governing bodies and those concerned with the strategic direction and oversight of museums have a primary responsibility to protect and promote this heritage, as well as the human, physical, and financial resources made available for that purpose. Enabling documentation, the governing body should ensure that the museum has a written and published constitution, statute, or other thing. We don't know that they don't have this, right? We... I am suspicious of this. Right? So. Do they have legal documentation? Question one. Status is suspect. So we're going to use it as a yes, no, maybe. This is, good, this is going to be a maybe. Do they have a mission statement? Yes. I think it's very likely. I think it's very likely that they have one, it's just that that mission is garbage. Right. That that mission, I think it will, I'm pretty sure we saw it uh, at the end of the gallery, that it was 
promoting the patriotism and blah 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 blah. But nothing says here that there has to be a good mission statement. It just has to be a mission statement. Uh, premises. The governing body should uh, secure adequate premises with a suitable environment. Uh, suitable environment. Yes, technically. We may revisit the physical resources here if there is not a separate section on being, you know, accessible. Uh, we're going to need to we'll need to revisit this. But for right now, we'll say yes in that the physical space is adequate. Uh, the governing body should ensure that the museum and its collections are available to all during reasonable hours and for regular periods. Particular regard should be given to those persons with special needs. Accessibility with regards to people with special needs. No. There's a violation. Okay, we got governing body should ensure that institutional standards of health, safety, and accessibility apply to its personnel and visitors. Uh, I'm going to ding it on this one. Uh, safety from harassment Definitely not upheld. We're dinging it there. So it's getting ding on the health and safety. Protection against disasters. The government should, uh... Protection from disasters. We're going to add a fourth question mark uh, of not, not applicable because we don't have any evidence otherwise. Security. To ensure appropriate security to protect collections against theft or damage in displays, exhibitions, working in storage areas, and while in transit, yes. Insurance and indemnity. Insurance. And A, but likely yes. Funding. Uh, yes, in spades. They have money to burn. Unlike every other heritage site in the world, this one has money to burn. Ah, that staircase is shaky, but... But, there's not actually any artifacts up there, and we already dinged it on health and safety for the, uh, you know, uh, sexual harassment from male staff members. So they're not handicap accessible, so we already dinged them on that. And they've already been dinged on other aspects of health and safety, so not great. Uh, but as far as, do I think that the those are liable to shatter? Uh, or the cables to snap and the whole thing to tumble down causing lethal injury, I find it unlikely. Income generating policy. The governing body should have a written policy regarding sources of income that it may generate through its activities or accept. Uh, we actually did see evidence that they have that uh, when they were talking about the policy of who's in the trust. That would be part of the income policy. Employment policy. The governing body should ensure that all action concerning personnel is taken in accordance with the policies of the museum as well as proper and legal procedures. This one is technically yes, but also no. Right, this one, this one feels bad because they only hired Kendra for the diversity points. But at the same time, so they are, but that does mean that they are, regardless of motivation, fulfilling their legal obligations, and so I can't really ding them at this. Uh, director. Director hiring. 
uh, should have the knowledge of the skills required to fill it. Uh, high standard of. No. High standard of ethical conduct is fucked. Access to governing bodies. Yes. Competence of museum personnel. Yes. Training. No. One day of training plus right, an intro day plus an email is not sufficient. Uh, training to let an employee run the place alone for a day. Ethical conduct. The governing body should never require museum personnel to act in a way that could be considered to conflict with the provisions of this code of ethics or any national law or specialist code of ethics. No. Easily no. Museum personnel and volunteers. The governing policy should have a written policy on volunteer work and volunteers under ethics. Uh, volunteers need to be reliant to uh, volunteers. Not applicable. Volunteer ethics. Not applicable. So. Yes equals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No equals one, two, three, four, five. Maybe, maybe equals one, and a equals one, two, three, four. Section 1. Section 2. Museums that maintain collections hold them in trust for the benefit of society and its development. Collecting spo collections policy. The governing body for each museum should adopt and publish a written collections policy that addresses the acquisition, care, and use of collections. Policies should clarify the position of any material that will not be catalogued, conserved, or Look at where we are on the man on the thing. There are 30 pages to this. There are 30 pages, we're on page 9. Mastrissa. <laughs> we ain't close yet. <laughs> so, collections policy. Uh implied, yes. You don't have an archive without one. Valid title. No object or specimen should be acquired by purchase, gift, loan, bequest, or exchange unless the acquired museum is satisfied that a valid title is held. Title. And A. Provenance and due diligence. And a, well, technically, yes, uh, all held objects are local. Objects and specimens from unauthorized or unscientific fieldwork. Museums should not acquire objects where there is reasonable co cause to believe that the recovery involved unauthorized or unscientific fieldwork or intentional destruction of damage to monuments, archaeological or geological sites, or of species and natural habitats. It does fulfill this, uh, because the field work that they ceased 
was being done properly. And they did, did not collect the human clavicles. They did not collect the human clavicle that would cause them to cease the production. So this is fine. Who's up next? By the way, I need to do that to get you the extra scroll distance. Okay. Uh, museums. Number next. Culturally sensitive. Culturally sensitive material. Yes. So this reads, collections of human remains and material of sacred significance should only be acquired should be acquired only if they can be held securely and cared for respectively. This must be accomplished in a manner consistent with professional standards and the interests and beliefs of members of the community, ethnic or religious groups from which the objects originate, where these are known. Yes? Because they don't... They refused to collect the objects in question. It's not in the museum. They ceased all excavations upon the discovery of human remains, and therefore they refused to collect it, and therefore do not violate that ethical principle. Protected biological Specimens and I. Living collections and I. Da, da, da. Right, this would be this would be an issue uh, if they say had the garden. Right, if they uh, recreated the garden that was behind the manor. Uh, then this would be an issue, because uh, if they're using heirloom vegetables, then they would be subject to this. Working collections, because those are a thing, right? Practices can be preserved. Where the emphasis is on preserving cultural, scientific, or technical process rather than the object, or where objects or specimens are assembled for regular handling and teaching purposes. Not applicable, they don't have any of those. Acquisition outside collections policy uh, should only be made in exceptional circumstances. Consider all other things. Um, Okay, acquisitions outside, collections policy not applicable, acquisitions by governing body, I'm giving this one a maybe, right? We don't actually have evidence of this, but given the behavior of, and how deeply intertwined the corporation, uh, hardcore is, with the trust and with the historical society, I would be a suspect that special care is a priority considering any item, whether for sale as a donation or as a tax benefit gift from members of governing bodies, museum personnel, or the families and close associates of these persons. I don't know that they're violating ethics principles here, but it's definitely looking suspicious. So we're giving them a maybe. Repositories of last resort. There's n no evidence that it is acting, uh, right? Nothing in this code of ed ethics should prevent a museum from acting as an authorized repository for unprovenanced, illicitly collected, or recovered specimens or objects from the territory over which it has lawful responsibility. Right, if this is the place it's supposed to be. Exactly. Yes, because this isn't an issue. Actually, I'm going to give that a not applicable. Because they aren't acting, they're not doing that properly. This just doesn't matter. So, uh, yes equals 
Let's say I've got one, two, three, four. Yes, equals four. N equals zero. Maybe equals one. And really the takeaway here is that most of this doesn't apply. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not that will equal six. Section three. If I can type good. Y'all, I hope this is riveting, riveting content because now we are just trying to eviscerate them. I, I love that we're just... I love that y'all just let me break out the ICOM code of ethics to just ravage this museum and that you think that this is quality content, right? This is, this is some, mm, juice. This is most entertaining. Good. All right. Oh, we got more. Sorry. We're not done yet. I thought we were done. We have up to 26 lines in this. All right. Let's keep going. Legal or other powers of disposal. Sorry, we're not done. Legal or other powers of disposal. When, where the museum has legal powers permitting disposals or has acquired objects subject to conditions of disposal, the legal or other requirements and procedures must be complied with fully. Where the original acquisition was subject to, to mandatory or other restrictions, these conditions must be observed unless, we, unless if it can be shown clearly that adherence to such restrictions is impossible, and if appropriate, relief may be sought through legal procedures. Not applicable, they didn't seem to be deaccessioning things. Right, they didn't seem to be disposing of things, and then they, uh... They seem to not be doing that, even when the things are harmful. The removal of an object or specimen from a museum collection must only be taken with a full understanding of the significance of its item, its character, legal standing, and any loss of public trust that may result from such action. Right, I don't think any of the stuff on deaccessioning and disposal is actually... I don't think any of that actually af affects this museum. Right? I don't know, but I don't think it does. Uh, responsibility for deaccessioning, not applicable. Right, chat, if you guys disagree with me on any of these, feel free to take it down, but I don't- uh, I, I'm with you, AC, I, I, I don't think- it, I don't think any of this repl- Disposal of deaccessioned items not applicable. We, we've got plenty to ding on them from. Um, income from disposal. I'm actually going to give them a maybe on this one, uh, because museum collections are held in public trust and may not be treated as a realizable asset. Money or compensation received from the deaccessioning and disposal of objects and specimens from a museum collection should be used solely for the benefit of the collection and usually for acquisitions to the same collection. I don't, again, I don't know that they're doing that. I don't know that they're doing that. Well, the Harwoods have not given me any faith that they're being responsible about the conflicts of interest between the Harcourt Corporation, the Harwood family, and the Blackhaven Historical Society. So... I don't... hmm. Purchase of deaccessioned collections. Museum personnel, governing body, or other families should not be permitted to purchase objects that have been deaccessioned. Um, purchase of deaccessioned items. I'm going to give this one, uh, not... Oh no. This one, this one's in the icky area because it's not clear whether the Harwood family owns the artifacts in the 
No, they don't. They can't. Uh, so we're gonna give them a non applicable on this. But... You know, that's a good point, Magistrissa. We never saw the human bone. We're gonna give these all maybes. We're gonna, we're gonna switch these over to maybes. No, they did not sell the Swan Mirror, my name is you. Uh, the... The Swan Mirror was sold- was believed to be lost, but then was sold at auction in 98. So, right, someone else found it. It's not related to the Blackhaven Historical Society that it was found. Or sold. Oh yeah, sorry, Liz, you did bring it up. Thank you. No, Magistrates, they didn't... Exactly, right? It was sold before the collection was created, so... The, the Historical Society was not the ones who found it. So I can't ding them for that one. I know! Wish we could. I wish we could. But I can't. We're not done yet. The muse collection continuity, the museum should establish and apply policies to ensure that collections and the associated information properly recorded are available for current use and will be passed on to future generations in as good and safe a condition as practicable, having regard to current knowledge and collections. Uh, collection continuity, yes. They have taken steps to ensure the stability of the thing, so that's fine. Such documentation, uh, delegation of collection responsibility. Professional responsibilities of only the care of the collection should be assigned to persons with appropriate knowledge. Presumably, yes. Um, delegation of collections. Yes. Protect Everything I've seen says that the actual thing was run fairly well. Documentation uh, should include a full identification and description of each item, association's provenance, condition, treatment, and present location. Uh, documentation. Yes, if it's in if artifact data, metadata is in the app or in the digital guide, they've collected it properly. Protection against disasters. Uh, protection. And A. Security of collection. Yes, but I don't feel good about it. Uh, since they've got the cameras on... You know what? No. Check your damned cameras. And even though the arc the right the archive is relatively secure. Right, in that it is behind a staff barrier next to the director's office. But it's not a supervised reading room. And they aren't checking the cameras. Which means it's awfully easy for da for theft and damage to occur. Preventative conservation, yes. Collection conservation and restoration.
no. Prince of Restoration of Hall was not stabilization. Right, so I'm dinging them on the phrase, the principal goal should be the stabilization of the object or specimen. All conservation pre procedures should be documented as reversible as possible, and all alterations should be clearly distinguishable from the original object or specimen. So, they're, dinging, they're getting dinged here for the principal goal of the glass building is clearly not the stabilization of the object, but rather an extremely expensive, fancy uh, way to showcase the hall in its full grandeur. Uh, and it's very irreversible. Live animal welfare. Yes, or not applicable. There are no live animals here. Uh, personal use of museum, personal use of museum collections. We don't have evidence of it being misused, right? We don't have any evidence to actually suggest that they're removing the, the items from it, so much as they're just hosting events on the halls, which is not an ethical violation. So, actually, actual count now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 yeses. Noes? We actually did ding them on two. Maybes. We're now up to a bunch. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 non-applicable. So this just wasn't a great section for us. Not a lot of it worked. True. Now that you've put it like this for this dude, I realize the design of the glass interiors is a pun by the writers, because people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Ha. I did put N for N. N equals 2. Section 3. Museums hold primary evidence for establishing and furthering knowledge. Museums have a particular responsibility to all for the care, accessibility, and interpretation of primary evidence collected and held in their collections. Who's ready to ding them on some stuff? He <laughs> uh, Museum's collection policy should indicate clearly the significance of the collections as primary evidence. Uh, yes, they seem to do this. Availability of collections. Museum have a, museums have a particular responsibility for making collections and all relevant information available as freely as possible, having regard for restraints arising for reasons of confidentiality and security. No. We've dinged them on a couple of times for this. So, uh, the big one here is what they did to Dorothy. Right, what they did to Dorothy Mitchell is 100% a violation of making collections and relevant information available freely because one, they straight up lied uh, on one important thing from evidence that they did have at that point, I think. It's not clear what time they acquired the pottery, but it's implied to be bef that they just straight up lied on that front. Uh, and second, we are a serious institution that does not respond to amateur requests, is a fucking garbage dance that is gatekeeping and inaccessible, and therefore I am dinging you for that. Oh, so, field collecting. Museums undertaking field collecting should develop policies consistent with academic standards and applicable national and international laws and treaty obligations. Field work should only be taken with respect and consideration for the views of local communities, their environmental resources and cultural practices, as well as efforts to enhance the cultural and national heritage. Uh, field collecting. No. I am dinging them for this one because having started to undertake it, they stopped the moment it got uncomfy and shout out to the archaeologists in the 70s for citing their ethical obligations 
to engage with this information, and then the museum at that point refuses to. That's a violation. Chat, I was not expecting them to hit 10 that fast. Uh, oops. Exceptional uh, collecting of primary evidence. In exceptional cases, an item without provenance may have such an inherently outstanding contribution to knowledge that it would be in the public interest to preserve it. The acceptance of such an item into a museum collection should be the subject of a decision by specialists concerned, uh, specialists and the discipline concerned about national or international prejudice. This is not applicable. Uh, as none of it seems to actually um, be that. Research by museum. Research by museum personnel shall relate to the museum's mission and objectives and conform to established legal, ethical, and academic practices. Yes, Grand Chicken Lord. Uh, we are do going through the International Council of Museums ethics guidelines, and we are dinging the heritage site, the fictional heritage site, Blackhaven Hall, to see exactly how many counts we can get him on, apart from the obvious of horrific racism and cover-ups uh, to pre uh, support white supremacists and glorify the name of white supremacists. Which is, um, having great fun just thinking of him. Just so. I'm debating on this. This one is a, this one is a maybe. Research might be a violation. I'm giving it a maybe. I might have to ding Kendra on that one. Next one, destructive analysis. Uh, when destructive analytical techniques are undertaken, a complete record of the material analyzed, the outcome of the analysis, and the resulting research, including publications, should become part of the permanent record of the object. That's true. We were advocating for arson, so maybe we'll maybe we'll take breach of ethics. Um, destructive research not applicable. Human remains and materials of sacred significance. Research on human remains and materials of sacred significance must be accomplished in a manner consistent with professional standards and take into account the interests and beliefs of the community, ethnic, or religious groups from whom these objects originated, where these are known. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm giving them a not applicable on this one. And that's going to sound really weird. This is going to sound really weird. I'm giving them a not applicable. The reason why is that technically the research upon the human remains was not done by the museum. It was done by an archaeological firm that did reflect these eth that did successfully reflect these ethics. The museum, because it is not technically the one that is actually doing the research, they subcontracted it. I don't think I can rightly uh, properly ding them for this one, even though they said, "Hey, we." We don't want to do this, therefore we're just going to stop the research, right? I don't love that, but there isn't an right? There isn't an ethical responsibility to continue research. Merely that research has to be continued in certain ways. 
Moon to Rider did literary analysis of this game. It does excellent ramping of tension, starting with the empathizing with the painting lady and subtle or not subtly wrong framings like servants, and the wham moment of seeing the shackles. As if there was any doubt that the museum 100% is hiding stuff, it's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. The writing team is real good on this, and the pacing is good. But right, does... Museum people in chat, does this make sense that I'm, like, giving them a nod applicable here? Because I, I genuinely don't know how to navigate that area. I don't know what rating to give them. Uh, and by the way, since I'm seeing the numbers, the numbers don't, are, for your accounts are going up. So, uh, just, if you're just tuning in, we just finished up playing Blackhaven uh, by Historiated Games. It's free on Steam. But now, given that Blackhaven Historical Society is fucking garbage and is actively hiding their own uh, complicities in white supremacy uh, and the horror uh, engaging in glorification of the family who owned the hall and were slave owners and murderers and horrifically racist, we are going through the International Council of Museums Ethics Guidelines and seeing exactly how screwed they are. We're going to get to that Magistrissa. We're going to talk about the game itself after we finish dinging them on all of these. Alright, Kyra. Have a good night. The VOD will be here. We will finish up. Retention of rights. Uh, messy. The, the, the farm did the research. So, IDK, if the Blackhaven Hall Historical Society is actually responsible. Followed guidelines. There isn't an ethical responsibility to continue excavations. Uh, oh god, Wolfie. Jesus. We're going to be going for a while yet. We're only halfway through this, and I've got one other thing I want to talk to y'all about before we finish, so we'll be going for a while, so please, please do get sleep. Uh... Shared, we're going to... Does it count that they haven't disinterred and transferred the remains to proper burial? Not... Mm. Depends on the group, and depends on whether they were being, they would have been disinterred from a proper burial ground, right? If what they had found was a burial ground, and then they were, the fact that they did not disinter the bodies is not a violation, because you didn't disturb the burial ground. Or you, once you realized it was, you stopped all excavations and stopped it. Covering up and hiding that there are human remains there is not in the interest of the surviving communities. You are correct. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'll give you that one. Actively downplaying the interests of descendants of deceased slaved population of the hall by stopping research. Retention of rights is not applicable. That one. So moving on. When museum personnel prepare material for presentation or to document field ex uh, investigation, there must be clear agreement with the sponsoring museum. 
I suppose actually we'll give that one a yes because they they put it on display. Presumably they did this. Shared expertise. No. Their treatment of Dorothy is a violation here. Members of the museum profession have an obligation to share their knowledge and experience with colleagues, scholars, and students in relevant fields. They should respect and acknowledge those from whom they have learned and should pass on such advancements in technique and experience that may be of benefit to others. Gatekeeping ain't that. Additionally, cooperation between museums and other institutions. Uh, museum personnel should acknowledge and endorse the need for cooperation and consultation between institutions with similar interests and collecting practices. For instance, uh, say, another historical society? One, two. No equals. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe equals one. Not applicable equals two. Yeah, this is... This is the International Council of... Yeah, International Council of Museums. A code of ethics. And they will... Most... most most large powerful institutions actually follow it in a very strict reading of it. Right? Because the thing is, there's a lot of gray area in a lot of these. There's so much gray area in so many of these that you can navigate and not really be in violation. Uh, certainly following the letter, with or without following the spirit. Uh, but, right, they make arguments to justify how they are not violating the things, at least. And so, at worst, things fall in the gray area. I know of, I know of very few institutions that are actively falling, like, com completely blowing these off. Because 99 point something percent of the museum profession uh, is interested in doing right. Institutional powers have a lot of other pressures that lead the, that vision to sometimes be mm -hmm. slightly compromised, but this is not a diss on any of anyone in that profession. They are trying, the vast, vast, vast majority of them are desperately trying to do good work, whether due to uh, donation agreements, or lack of funding, or recent disasters, or some other issue, choices have to be made, and there are choices that put different ethical standards in this booklet in conflict with each other. You're never going to be 100% compliant, that's not possible. But. We can safely assume good faith in most institutions. Blackhaven Hall, our lovely fictional heritage site, we cannot assume good faith for because they have demonstrably shown that they have no interest in good faith. Museums provide opportunities for the appreciation, understanding, and management of the natural and cultural heritage. Principle, museums have an important duty to develop their educational role and attract wider audiences from the community, locality, or group they serve. Interacting with the constituent community and promotion of their heritage is an integral part for the educational role of the museum. Displays should be in accordance with the stated mission, policy, and purpose of the museum. Section 4. Displays, exhibitions... I'm going to give this to them. Garbage. Be careful. Phrasing isn't a violation of it. It's interpretation. Interpretation of exhibitions. No. Um, 
Gotcha, careful phrasing. Right. Museums should ensure that the information they present in displays and exhibitions is well-founded, accurate, and gives appropriate consideration to represent their groups or beliefs. They have reason to be suspicious of the Battle of Blackhaven as being inaccurate or a false report, uh, given that no uh, militaria was found in any of the excavations, and they are severely underrepresenting uh, the conditions of enslaved peoples. So that's a big ol' no. Exhibition of sensitive materials. They're not displaying any sensitive materials, so... Not applicable because they aren't doing any. Si similarly, request for removal. Uh, removal of sensitive materials not applicable right request for removing from public display of human remains or material of sacred significance from the originating communities must be addressed expeditiously with respect and sensitivity request for the return of such material should be addressed similarly museum policies should clearly define the process for responding to such requests display of unprovenanced material We're giving them this one because they know the provenance of everything. Publication. Information published by museums by whatever means should be well-founded, accurate, and give responsible consideration to the academic discipline, societies, or beliefs represented. I'm dinging them on this for the exact same reason I'm dinging them for the accuracy of information in the display. We know it's not it. No, Wolfie, uh, because, right, so the question is, would it not being displaying the materials be a violation in and of itself, given the context of the history it's about? No, because there are ways other than display to acknowledge the material's significance and treat it thoughtfully. Right? Display is not the only way we can acknowledge it. Now, the fact that they completely hid away all the shackles and chains? Not great. That's not sensitive material. Oh, they're not doing that. Uh, you're right, Wolfie, they're not doing that. But I can't think them on the display of sensitive... on the failure to display sensitive material in and of itself because there isn't an ethical responsibility to display sensitive material, right? We've dinged them for that in the accuracy of the information because we know that's wrong. We know that's unethical, but the raw act of display or not display, that's not, right? Because they aren't displaying it, they're not in violation. Uh, because this is pretty limited, right? Human remains are materials of sacred significance, must be displayed in a manner consistent with professional standards, and where known, taking into account the interests and beliefs of the members of the community, ethnic, or religious groups from whom the objects originate. They must be represented with great tact and respect for the feelings of human dignity held by all peoples. Right? So since it's not on display, it's like it's not covered in here. The fact that it's not on display violates the interpretation because they're not providing an accurate interpretation to all of the evidence they have in hand. But, uh, reproductions. I'm actually going to ding them on this. Um, should respect the integrity of the original when replicas, reproductions, or copies of items in the collection are made. All such copies should be permanently marked as facsimiles. Yes, in the galleries. No, in the archive. Well, maybe in the archive. Let's put it as a maybe in the archive. We don't know that 
of the originals in the archive are not preserved. But mixing, but we only work with transcripts. Which is not respecting the original, right? That's not respecting the integrity of the original because you're potentially deaccessioning the original. No, Raptora, right, because they did say the bed frame was original, but then the bed sheets and curtains were facsimile. So that's, that's fine. That, that's okay. The mattress, uh, uh, did, yeah, that's, that's still fine. Scoric. Yeses. One, two, three. No. Two. Three. No equals two. Uh, maybe equals one. Not applicable equals two. God, we're getting them on so many things. This feels really good. This feels extremely satisfying. But we've got a couple of big sections here. Oh, actually, this one's really short. Section seven. Oh, good. Section section eight is the doozy. Good. Good, good, good. Section five only has two things. Identification of illegally or illicitly required objects. Where museums provide an identification service, they should not act in any way that could be regarded as benefiting from such activity directly or indirectly. The identification of authenticity that are believed or suspected uh, to have been illegally or illicitly acquired, transferred, imported, or exported should not be made public until the modern authorities have been notified. Authentication and valuation. Valuations may be made for the purpose of insurance of museum collections. Opinions on the monetary value of other objects should only be given unofficial requests from other museums or competent legal, governmental, or responsible public authorities. However, when the museum itself may be the beneficiary, uh, appraisal of an object or specimen must be undertaken independently. Okay. I'm going to give them both of these. Uh... Is, this is a not applicable because nothing suggests nothing suggests that they are doing this regularly or that they have illicit material. Up, appraisal. I'm going to give them a yes for this uh, because even though they mal they potentially maliciously appraised something and certainly incorrectly appraised something or incorrectly identified something. Uh, they did so on a request from a director of a historical society, so they aren't coming into effect here. So, yes equals one, no equals zero, maybe equals zero, and a equals one. And that is it for this section. Museums work in close collaboration with the communities from which their collections originate as well as those they serve. Museum collections reflect the cultural and natural heritage of the communities from which they have been derived. As such, they have a character beyond that of ordinary property, which may include strong affinities with national, regional, local, ethnic, religious, or political identity. It is important, therefore, that museum policy is responsive to this situation. Cooperation. Museums should report the sharing of knowledge, documentation, and collections within, with museums and cultural organizations in the countries and communities of origin. The possibility of developing partnerships with museums in countries or areas that have lost a significant part of their heritage should be explored. Cooperation. No. They're getting dinged for how they traded Dorothy Mitchell. 
Return of cultural property. Museums should be prepared to initiate dialogue for the return of cultural property to a country or people of origin. Not applicable because that didn't seem to be a thing they did. Uh, restitution of cultural property. When a country or people of origin seeks the restitution of an object or specimen that can be demonstrated to have been exported or otherwise transferred in violation of the principles of international and national conventions and shown to be part of that country's or people's cultural or natural heritage, the museum should, if legally free to do so, take prompt and responsible steps to collaborate in return. The British Museum is subject to this one an awful lot because they're not legally allowed to, and the MFA in Boston is just as often subject to this due to very weird donor agreements around, say, the Benin Bronzes. Blackhaven Hall is not applicable to. Uh, Magistrissa, right? So that was the part I was referring to with the uh, malappraisal, right? So they misidentified the bird as being a genuine article uh, based on information that they did not seem to have at the time. If we say the request came in in the late 60s and the excavations were from the mid 70s, they simply didn't have the other pottery shirts. Uh, so, but since the request since they didn't voluntarily do the appraisal or identification request, they did so, uh, I guess, at, well, hmm. No, you know what? We're going to revisit that. No, and here's why. Uh, the... The bird had been independently seems to have been independently uh, evaluated and appraised uh, by Dorothy Mitchell. And the museum undertook the identification maliciously in an attempt to discredit it. It wasn't actually a request. It was, here is my evidence. And the museum was like, no, your evidence is wrong without a request coming through. They're not allowed to do that. You aren't allowed to identify other people's objects unless if they ask you to. Got him. Cultural objects from occupied country. Not applicable. Contemporary community. Where museum activities involve a contemporary community or its heritage, acquisitions should be may only be made based on the informed. Uh, Lizard, it's super complicated. There isn't a good answer here. I wonder how they're doing on returning cultural property with regard to the human remains. Because the remains are in their original burial ground, so that might not really need to be returned? How does that work? Yeah. So this is messy. Uh, but since no requests to return the property, to return the remains, have been made. Uh, the knowledge that there are remains doesn't seem to be public in the first place, so it's complicated. AC helpfully answers, here's my museum studies answer. I second that. I second that stance. So, right, the, the knowledge that there are human remains doesn't seem to be public. No requests have come in to repatriate the remains, to return them to the descendants of their communities to have them or have them reburied. The museum ideally is being proactive about this and is reaching out, but I don't know if it's an ethical violation that they are not. Right? Red prepared to initiate and has a responsibility to initiate are two different statements, and so I don't think I can actually say they're an ethics violation for that. It's uncomfy, you don't feel good about it, but is that properly an ethics violation? I don't know. I don't know.
Anyway, respect for community served. Contemporary communities, where museum activities involve a contemporary community or its heritage, uh, acquisition should only be made based on informed and mutual consent without exploitation of the owner or informant. Respect for the wishes of the community involved should be paramount. Uh, so, community acquisitions. not applicable because they're not acquiring anything off of the owners so the museum the museum is not uh, collecting things from other communities and is not entering exploitative contracts with them as far as we know certainly within the context of the game and what it has done this this isn't to violate it's not relevant Funding of community activities. When seeking funds for activities involving contemporary communities, their interest should not be compromised. Uh, funding not applicable. Use of collections from contemporary communities. Museum usage of collections from contemporary communities requires respect for human dignity and the traditions and cultures that use such material. Such collections should be used to promote well-being. Uh, social development, tolerance, and respect by advocating multi-social, multicultural, and multilingual expression. Oh yeah, lizard. Absolutely. If they had tried to acquire it, uh, it would have been a dick. Correct. Uh, it requires respect. <laughs> They're not using collections though, uh, so not applicable because they aren't using any. Supporting organizations in the community. Museums should create a favorable environment for community support, e.g. friends of museums and other supporting organizations, recognize their contribution, and promote a harmonious relationship between the community and museum personnel, e.g. a local uh, historical society that has requested to work with you to uh, provide a better experience for the black members of the community that you are embedded in. Maybe equals zero. And not applicable. This is mostly not applicable because there's a whopping five out of the seven things there. We're coming up on the end, chat. And uh, while I severely understated the number of things that we'll be able to ding them on, I think we're getting real close here. Alright. Familiarity with... Familiar... So the principal members of the museum profession should observe accepted standards of laws and uphold the dignity and honor of the, their possession. They should safeguard the public against illegal or unethical professional conduct. So, we are going to exclude Kendra from this. We are going to exclude Kendra from this. Because this is the section that covers Kendra is fine. <laughs> They may properly object to practices that are perceived to be damaging to a museum profession or matters of professional ethics. Kendra was doing that. Loyalty to colleagues and the employing museum is an important responsibility and must be based on allegiance to fundamental ethics principles. Since they've been dinged on so many things already, Kendra is fine here. Members of the museum profession should promote the investigation, preservation, and use of information inherent in collections. Though, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Museums should conform to all local laws. Seems to be yes. Likely yes. International legislation. Maybe. Look. 
I'm not going to read these. We're, I'm not looking, going to look through the Hague Convention in order to see if they did, uh, if they have broken other things. Right. Oh, no equals zero. Maybe equals one. And A equals zero. Section eight. Here's where we get juicy. Oh yeah, you are correct. Thank you for correcting me, Magistrissa. That lovely, lovely ACA violation? Yeah. ACA violations. Or, sorry, ADA. My bad. ADA violations, yes. The American with Disabilities Act, important thing. Gotta follow it. Now. Familiarity with legislation. Yes. Because the director seems to be extreme, extremely, extremely conversant with the relevant information and is trying very hard to use lawyers to get around it. So I'm giving them that one. They're being scummy about it, but you know, they do know it. have an obligation to follow the policies and procedures that are employing institution, however they may properly object to practices that are perceived to be damaging. That's a yes. If they uh, object to Kendra, or if they sack Kendra for this, this, that turns into a no. Professional conduct. Loyalty to colleagues and to the employing museum is an important professional responsibility and must be based on allegiance to fundamental ethical principles applicable to the profession as a whole. Maybe. They seem to have loyalty, but it seems to be a very bro culture sort of loyalty, right? So I don't know if that, that feels like it follows the letter, but very much not the spirit. Academic and scientific responsibilities. No. Illicit market. Uh, and A. Confidentiality. Yes. They are. Security, yes, right. Information about the security, actually this is just not applicable to the events of the game. We have no information on that, so not applicable. Exception, uh, legal opportunity to assist the uh, exception there too. Not applicable. Personal independence. Uh, while members of the profession are entitled to a measure of personal independence, they uh, must realize that no private business or professional interest can be wholly separated from their employee institution. I think. I think. Professional relationships. Big fat no on this one because of the email Kendra sent to, uh, that was shit talking, or the email that Helen sent that was shit talking Kendra.
professional consultation. It is a professional responsibility to consult other uh, colleagues when the expertise available in the museum is insufficient to ensure good decision making. I'm giving them this one because they did, they just didn't listen to the consult, to the consultants. The obligation is to consult, not to listen to them, so I'm giving it to them. You know. But are otherwise like archaeologists exhorting them to, you know, go through proper ethics agreements would have been taken advantage of. Gifts, favors, loans, or other personal benefits. Museum employees must not accept gifts, favors, loans, or other personal benefits that may be offered to them in connection with their duties for the museum. Maybe? It's not clear how the, uh, working, right, working with the white supremacist congressman in the late 50s. Not clear how that interacts, but you know. So be it. Um, and, right, notably, right, the work in the country club is the museum providing a benefit to the employees, not an outside person accepting, offering favors. So, Outside employment or business interests. Now, the head of the museum is the CEO of Harcourt, right? Not the director, but like the head head is, they're intimately tied. This is a massive conflict of inf interest. Dealing with natural or cultural heritage. Not applicable. Interaction with dealers. Not applicable. Private collecting. Members of the museum profession should not compete with our institution either in the acquisition of objects or in any personal collecting activity. An agreement between the museum professional and governing body concerning any private collecting must be formulated and scrupulously followed. Not... I'm going to give it to them on an absence of evidence. There's no actual evidence to indicate anyone is doing private collecting here. Use of the name and logo of ICOM. ICOM logo. Not applicable. ICOM. Should any other conflict of interest develop between an individual and the museum, the interest of the museum should prevail. Maybe. Not necessarily applicable, but... Yes, equals one, two, three, four, five, six. No, equals one, two, three. Maybe equals one, two, three. And A equals one, two, three, four, five, six. So what are our totals here? Yes, equals 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 20, 28. The nose, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. M. Is one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And ones that are, we don't have any information and therefore are not applicable to the game. Uh, four, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. 23, 29. So this is fucking grim.
That's not a good look. Well, we did win the prediction with flying colors. That was on me. I set the bar too low. Now remember, there's a couple of these that are bad faith, that are really bad faith compliance. Right, they're technically compliant, I can't hurt them, but uh, yeah. Feels bad. Feels bad. Yeah, Wolfie, if you want me to share the doc, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, after stream. Otherwise, you'll get to watch me go through it in the, uh, in the VOD. It'll be attached to that. So then we have one more thing to do tonight. We aren't done yet. We game. So, basically, the quick thought review. Uh, pros. Cons. Alright, AC. Go enjoy work. The last... 15-20 minutes of this will be here. And right, remember, this is, there is nothing in the ICOM Code of Ethics that actually properly covers don't be racist. There's a lot of things that kind of reach towards it, and it's definitely a fundamental principle that affects the museum profession. But, um... Don't be racist. Kind of important. Just a thought. Just, just, just suggesting. And yeah, right. So realistically, the host of microaggressions uh, do not are not included in this. The. Altering of archives is not included in this. Uh, actually, I think that's probably the biggest thing here. Uh, since this is the International Council of Museums, not the Society of American Archivists, there are some bonus. Bonus. Uh, don't fucking alter archives. God damn. Like, this sounds obvious, but, right, uh, while altering archives is not something ar uh, deliberate removal and concealment, archival material. As a matter of fact, actually, SAA, Code of Ethics, Society of American Archivists, not the Society of American Archaeologists, who are also relevant to this discussion. But, in summary, archivists should strive to expand access and usage opportunities for users and potential users of archival records. Ding on that one. Actively contribute ideas and resources to our field's body of theoretical and practical scholarship. Not relevant. Cultivate collaborative opportunities not only with creators, users, and colleagues, but with any interested parties who wish to engage with archival records. Dinged on that one. Develop and follow professional standards that promote transparency and mitigate harm. Ding on that one. Respect the diversity found in humanity and advocate for archival collections to reflect that rich complexity. Dinged on that one. Recognize the importance of professional education and development by supporting lifelong learning for themselves and others. We'll give them a maybe on that one. Devise environmentally sustainable techniques for preserving collections and serving communities. We'll give them that one. Create mentorship opportunities for library school students, new professionals, and any individual in the archives field who seeks to enrich their work and experience. Meh. 
actively share their knowledge and expertise with curators and colleagues. Dinged on that one. Values and use. History and memory. Preservation. Responsible stewardship. Selection. They accept. <laughs> Archivists make choice about which materials to store based on a wide range of criteria. They accept the responsibility of serving as active agents in shaping and interpreting the documentation of the past. The cost of long term preservation and ongoing challenges of accessibility prevent most of the documents and records created in modern society from being kept in perpetuity. Understanding this, archivists recognize the wisdom of seeking advice from other stakeholders during all processes that result in the selection of materials for an archive's holdings. Additionally, uh, da 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 da. A historical record cannot be right, provided with digital and physical surrogates for human memory, both individual and collectively, and serve as evidence against which individual and social memory can be compared. While the historical record cannot be defined by a single document collection or memory, archivists recognize that primary sources allow people to examine past events and gain insight into human experiences. Hint, hint. You don't alter them. Archivists provide transparent information about the authenticity and origin of archival materials. Using archival description that document the unique archival characteristics of records, archivists should not willfully alter, manipulate, or destroy data or records to conceal facts or distort evidence. Archivists thoroughly document any actions they take that may cause changes to the records in their care or raise questions about the record's authenticity. Ding on that one. So you know. Big no no. Okay, now. Changing tack here. Changing tack. Uh This is a scholarly game. Black Haven is a game made by uh Right. Black Haven is about the historical process. Uh, historical process and heritage sites is made by academics and is. Engaging with a long hist engaging explicitly a long history of white supremacy and abuse. Right? This is a game that is making a historical argument. I think there's no doubt about that. Right, this is a game that is using the framework of being in a heritage institution that is grossly failing in their uh, responsibilities as a cultural heritage institution. And it is using the experiences of our player character and her lived experience as a black woman in America uh, in order to make arguments about history and the continued impacts of history. Pros. So, without necessary, we're going to review the game basically, but we're going to do it in a way that as I hopefully extra able to be extrapolated to a wider context. Pros. Academics making games allows far greater accuracy of replication. Right? 
the I artifacts and records all feel really right. And not just right, this isn't a vague uh, authenticity. These nail the diction, tone, etc. of every relevant time period. Now, the other half of this uh, is right, very, very relevant. Yeah. Uh, targeted message is highly relevant to ongoing debates. Clearly familiar with cultural heritage scholarship. I think another benefit here is that uh, represents historical process honestly, if kind of simplistically. Yep, a large focus on empathy for the past. and those who engage with it and right i mean last last stream raptors asked about you know what does what does being set in the past actually do for us i mean this is it Right. This is what it does for us. Or setting something in the present but referring to the past. It lets us present historical process. We were digitizing archival records. In a plausible archive. Yep. And so a benefit of it being set in 2019 uh, and being, I mean, being about the 18th century and the 19th century and the experience, the erasures of enslaved people within those time periods and within scholarship and heritage about those time periods is that we get to look at the process, right? We don't have to reconstruct what do we think a thing was like. We can lean into the uncertainty and talk about the evidences. And what evidences are present and what evidences are absent in this story. Uh, and such, I think in a game with this framing, with this, a game with this framing, uh, made by academics, is capable of a much more nuanced meta narrative subjectivity. Right? Academics are pretty good at explaining. Right? So. The museum is unreliable. Kendra 
has personal experiences that color her commentary. The, the game itself sh shows a fairly cartoonishly evil family. Everything is filtered. Right? Everything is filtered. Now cons, because I think this is this does have cons. One, uh, technical concerns. This game didn't run very well. Right, the frame rate was real chunky. The game just didn't run very well, and that does that does matter. Right, tech. The quality of the narrative aside, the, uh, I'd also add to this animations. If they could invest, if they could get Kendra's body physically there and physically in the mirror. That would be way more impactful. Genre. Academic default to walking simulator. Either with a quiz. Right, I think this is a con. Right? It's easy for academics to default to a walking simulator because walking and talking is our thing. It's what we're really good at doing. But right, it was a walking simulator with a quiz. If you don't like walking simulators, you're not gonna have a good time. You're not gonna have a good time here. So, that does matter. This, this does... This does matter. It was intensely well executed game. Right? It was intensely well executed, well written game. And obviously the emotions it had resonated with everyone here. Because it is just gut wrenching to read these fictional but entirely eminently plausible primary documents. Right, these aren't insurmountable, but it is a problem. Uh, I think another problem here is skill. This is a small game. It works to the game's benefits. Uh, but not many... Mm, yes, typing. But not many people are... I suspect will actually play the game. I think that that matters. That I think really matters. Not none, and the people who do, congratulations, right? You're in for a treat. A lot of people should. I agree. Well, this is the core of my concerns with academics making games. Steam is a crowded, crowded marketplace. And... Succeeding through that is a problem. Succeeding through that is a big problem. It's difficult. Right? Oversaturating the genre is not great. But also, right, games... More places than Steam do exist. You are correct. 
right? But Steam is far and away the market share dominator. And so, right, and the Switch store is not necessarily less full. Well, getting this on Switch would have been, would be real freaking cool. Getting this on Switch would be real freaking cool. Oh, but so much for this. Let's see what the flaws, let's try and really push on this historical argument and see what the limitations are. Uh... Blackhaven is so cartoonishly evil that, right, for me, it certainly was a, a evil in a way that just works. It just works. It makes you really, really despise, makes the space feel uncomfortable and tense. But I can see people critiquing it on the grounds that cartoon Blackhaven is flatly evil and unworried about and white able supremacist. Right. This might strike people this might strike people who don't know how real it is as too far. Right. Right, because we know we know that it's all within But if someone who's not already conditioned to kind of recognize that, is this, does this go over well? Yeah, exactly, Raptorus. The other people in the US kept going like, wait, is this actually how it is? Is this actually plausible? Without someone here to guide you to say, yeah, no, this is, this is, I feel it. Uh, you may just bounce off it. Uh, and that's, that's a problem because then the historical, ar the historical argument completely fails if you do not already know enough to know that this is believable. Because, yeah. But right, it started really, really, really plausible and really, 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 right, right up in there. And then there was, you know, oh yeah, we're just like trying to get around ADA because fuck you. Uh, and you have insulted our honor by daring to suggest that you might be related to us. And blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Don't know. It is a real problem. Uh, right. How does this... Oh no, what are the other limitations here? Because obviously I love I love this game. This game is immediately top tier stuff. Great. Love it. Well, I'm trying to figure out like... There's something bothering me that I can't place though. Oh yeah, uh... Yeah, everything, right? 
You're right. Oh yeah. Uh, the game still makes sacrifices. Everything is on hand in one room. It's justified later, but right. They're just, like, not good at being evil. They're just, like, really not good at being evil, which is really funny. Uh, but... Yeah, uh... This game is reliant on being able to rep to use modern sense modern behavior and culture as the default that's what it is got it uh right does this transfer into other settings right so this game sidesteps the hardest part of doing a historical setting by not having it be in a historical setting. It's in 2019. Science Steps having to make choices about everything. Uh, Ground Check and Lord, it was mostly just frame rate stuff. The game is not amazingly optimized. There wasn't anything where it was actively bad, but your mileage may vary. Exactly, right? Ultimately, Manish Risa, you are correct, uh, this is a game about cultural heritage. Uh, it never got up to high frame rates, Grand Check and Lord. It was like hovering in the 30s uh, for most of it, but it dropped down to probably 10 or 15 at its worst points. Cultural heritage and historical practice. Historical mal practice. It doesn't have a historical setting. It doesn't setting. Which limits how well its successes can be replicated. Right? Does that seem fair? Which might potentially limit. Right? Does, does this seem fair and like a reasonable conclusion for broader historical games? Being a histor a game about heritage magnificently. Wonderful slow burn tension. Wonderful use of heritage site. Wonderful use of the archive. The last lesson, 
get hype for Cassius, it's gonna tell us a lot. Right. I think Cassius is gonna tell us a lot about what this style of academic produced game is capable of. Because we'll be moving out of a heritage game into a historical game. And seeing that change is gonna be real cool to see. Alright chat, I think that's where we wrap up, right? Unless if anyone else has any like final thoughts here before we close. By the way, thank you to everyone who stuck around here. This has been a five hour stream and it has been excellent the whole way through. So, I'm looking forward for to it. Perfect. Awesome. So, uh, if you enjoy this, uh, it's been a doozy. The VOD will be up on YouTube soon-ish. Uh, as soon as I get around to it, oops. But if you did, make sure you consider uh, supporting the channel, following if you haven't already, consider subscribing using that Twitch Prime sub, or regular sub, or subscribe on YouTube as well. Uh, special thanks to our patrons, Reptoir77, Leander Tucker, Geo Anomaly, Angus Mole, Aiden Frost, Chris J, and Addy Bird uh, for their support. If you want to support the stream too, do make sure you head off over to patreon.com slash Ludo History uh, in order to check that out to choose the option that best supports you. So I'm glad you all enjoyed. This has been a delight. This game is excellent. And reminder, uh, this game is free on Steam. So do go check it out. It is truly something special and I have chat reactions and my reactions of being just freaking furious at the characters through most of it as any indication. They did their job super duper well. If you want to join the Discord to chat with us outside of stream time uh, and get other sorts of updates, do uh, you can follow the link in the description for that. Otherwise, I will catch you all on Friday for more God of War. And until then, I hope you have a good rest of your week and have a good night, everyone. All right, ciao.